Okay, now before I paint oil paints over the top of my acrylic paints, what I like to do is spray it with a protective coat. And I use Krylon Crystal Clear. This is a high gloss coat. You don't have to use Krylon. You don't have to use this spray. This is just what I use. It's what I'm comfortable with. But the point being is I like to use a gloss coat and unify the sheen of my painting. And what that does is we're gonna be using a gloss medium with our oil paints. And so I like to just unify that sheen and make it glossy before I start. So I have a good idea of how my painting is gonna look when I'm applying oils. Maybe what I wanna work on and what I don't wanna work on. It's just gonna give me a better idea. Now, if you want a matte painting and you're gonna be using a medium that makes your oil paints matte, you might wanna spray your painting with a matte spray. But I like to use that protective spray because if we're gonna be adding paint thinners or mineral spirits, we don't wanna lift anything off that we've already done with our acrylics. So this just adds a layer of protection. And we also wanna make sure that it's dry. I've dried this about 24 hours in front of a fan and it should be good to go. Don't paint too soon. We wanna make sure that's thoroughly dry because that oil paint will actually lift off because that protective spray has to breathe as it's drying. And if we paint that oil over the top, it's just not gonna be a good mix. So why would I wanna paint oils over the top of what I have here? It's a beautiful acrylic painting. I could be very happy with it right now, but I can only take my acrylic paints so far. I could keep working and working and working at this, and it's never going to progress beyond this point. Acrylic paints are always going to have a limiting factor to them, and that's just the truth. You can take your oils much further than you ever could with acrylics. I want this to be as luminous as, as I want it to have as most the most depth as it can possibly have. I want these lights to appear like they're actually glowing, and we're just not going to be able to compete with oils by using acrylics. So why wouldn't I just paint this with oils then? Well, time. Time is a huge deal for me. My time is very important. And so with an oil painting, this would probably take me three weeks to get it to this point. With acrylics, it takes about one week. And those two weeks time is huge. So it's basically time efficiency is why I use acrylics to start. And then at this point, um, I can cheat a little bit and I can go back to the oils. This just allows me to basically skip a few steps with acrylics now I can move to my oils and really bring out those luminous qualities that I'm looking for. And so what I'm using today is I just use, you don't have to use Gamblin. I like Gamblin, it's just what I've always used. So I use Gamblin Artist Oils, and then I'm using their medium. It's called Galkide Medium. This is an alkyd-based medium. You could use things like Liquin. It's basically, it's virtually, it is the same thing as this right here. So this is just a alkyd, gloss medium it's fast drying and of course because i like time efficiency and i like working with acrylics time is of the essence so i use a fast drying medium and we're only going to be we don't have to worry about fat over lean because the beauty about painting an acrylic painting like this and taking it this far is when we're finishing with oils we're only going to paint one layer maybe two and in some cases i'll use three layers but it's very rare so we don't have to worry about oil paint cracking or anything like that because we're only gonna be using one or two layers for the most part. So this is what I use. And then also uh, my brushes are usually a little bit different for oil paints. I like to use, um, this one is, these are Eclipse by Windsor Newton. Now I also use my, my, my favorite round blender or scrumbling brushes from Artist Loft and Princeton. You guys know that I love those brushes, but I don't use expensive brushes. So these are about anywhere from nine to $20 a piece. I've used 50 to $80 brushes. It doesn't make a difference. I'm sorry to break it to you, but I could get the same painting with a $10 brush um, as I could with a, a $80 brush. So I use brushes that are always like probably under 20 bucks. So this is, these are Windsor Newton Eclipse brushes. Brushes aren't a big deal to me. The brush is only as good as the painter behind them. So I think that's it. We're gonna get into it. If you guys have questions about just the, the technicalities of working with oils over acrylics, let me know if I didn't cover anything in the introduction here. But uh, let's get started and I'll show you what I'll do.
Okay, so I'm basically using the same palette that I do with my acrylics as just a piece of particle board, and then I've got some plastic that I tape on so I can easily clean that up. And uh, I think these are the colors. We're going to start with the sky. So these are the colors that I think I'll need for the sky. And we've got our medium. And of course, just to give you an idea of kind of how runny this medium is, really not going to need a lot. I'm just going to drizzle a little bit for now. And I might need to add more later, but that's pretty much all I've got for my palette setup. Let's move to the painting. Okay, so let's just talk about this real quick. Uh, I've got a very good blend of colors in the sky. Um, our moon is looking all right. But if you, if you look close, you can see we've got some imperfections, um, just kind of some blotchy areas down low here. You can kind of see one right there. And then you can kind of see there's maybe some right there, maybe a little bit right there. There's just some minor, minor things um, that we can probably smooth out. Uh, same with the moon. I think we can make kind of the moon appear that it's uh, maybe glowing a little bit more. Um, so basically, and you'll see what I'm going to do. So basically what I'm going to do, I also have a small jar of just some mineral spirits. This is odorless mineral spirits. And what I basically do is I'll grab my brush, I'll go over to my mineral spirits, I'll drip it, dip it, sorry, dip it in uh, the mineral spirits. And then I've got a little bit on the brush and then I'll pick up some of that medium. And then basically what I'll do is I'll take some paint and I'll mix it into that medium. Take some more medium, mix it. So we've got pretty thin. Might take a little more paint. We want it to be about 50-50 medium, just what I like to start with. Paint to medium, 50-50. And then what I do, I'm trying to find a good brush here. I'll probably go with, probably go with one of my nice round blender or scrumbling brushes. And I find this area down here. Now first I guess I want to test that color. Yeah, now you see how that goes on? It's a lot brighter. I kind of like that brightness to it. So I'm going to apply it just like that. And I guess this is the beauty of oil paints is that's going to take forever to dry. Um, not as long as if we didn't have the medium, but we've got a long time to work with it. And I'm going to take my brush and just ever so softly and carefully I'm going to start just kind of pushing it around, blending that out a bit. Now that went on pretty thin. I think what I can do is just grab more of that color. So maybe we want a little bit more paint. Try to get that reflection out of there. Maybe we want a little more paint with that. We could probably add some quinacridone to that. Let's try it again. Yes, yeah, so that might be a good color. So I'll just basically go around and I'll start thinking, where do I want that to be? Here. Uh, maybe some here. Okay. So that's pretty good. Now, next thing is I'm going to want some quinacridone in there. I just want that to be a little bit darker as we move further up in the sky. And I'm also going to add some Prussian blue to that. So we've got kind of a violet color. Now I'm just going to test this out. Hmm. That's probably going to be too rich, so I'll take some white. I'll add some white to that. That might be better. We'll try that for now. So I'm just going to add some of that. Okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Not worried about going over anything. I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so 
We'll start with that. So we've got some pretty good colors. Now look how brighter that is compared to the uh, acrylics underneath that. And that's why I like the oil paint. It's just going to be so bright, luminous. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of just blend that around, push that around. Just taking our dry, this is a dry brush, our round blender. I'm not worried about any objects. We'll go right over the top. We can fix that. I'll show you how. Look how easy that is just to blend. We can keep working at this for a long time compared to acrylic paints. We, of course, would already have dry paint at this point, so no worries on that. Just kind of blending that around. Look at I go right over that sign. Oh no, don't worry. So it's just so easy to paint oil. If you've never painted oil paints, this is just a perfect introduction to how oils will work for you. Because it's just so easy. You don't have to worry about layering. You don't have to worry about any of the rules. You just get some on there, move it around. Okay, perfect. Now look how much brighter this glow is looking now. We've just, we've turned on the lights, essentially. Okay, so and I'm just kind of thinking about some things to work on. Maybe we want to take a bit more of this. Just got a brighter color here. Yeah, let's just add some more right there. I just want to brighten up a couple spots. So just add some right there. And the more we do this, our dry brush here is going to start picking up some paint as well. So it's just going to get better and better. So I'm just tapping, just tapping it onto the canvas and just trying to buff that out, just buffing it out, blending it out. Very lightly, super lightly actually. looking beautiful. Kind of move it up up a little bit and I try to just fade that into the sky a bit more. Now I really like this area through here. I don't know how much work I want to do on it. I may do it. Okay now I can kind of go into the tree here. Just buffing on that color. Any areas that I think I can get away just brightening it. I'm going to try to do that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, now let's pick up, I'm just going to pick up some white on my brush as well. Yeah, see how brighter that is? Let's just add. Some brighter effects down low. Just going to increase that glow. We want things to glow very brightly. And kind of blend it up a bit. Same thing right here. Go right over the top of what I already have. Not a big deal. Okay. Perfect. I think we're very close to having a really nice sky. Okay, now 
These are called style sticks. They're really hard to find. I ordered them online. These are just called Lowell Cornell style sticks. These are, and I can't find them anymore actually, but it's basically just a sponge. So anything with it, like just find a sponge with a sharp tip. You could even just buy a sponge and then cut it to be, have a sharp tip. Now, I'm gonna dip that in mineral spirits and then I'm going to take a rag or a paper towel and I'm just going to kind of dab it off but you're not going to get all of it off it's still going to be kind of on there and the spot we went over the sign we went over watch me just look at that it just lifts it right off we could actually lift everything we've just done completely off and start over if we wanted to and that's kind of the fun part about doing it this way with oil paints that's why I say it's a great introduction because when you're done and this is why I use that protective coating you can just get rid of it just like that and then I dip it back into my mineral spirits I dry it off and that cleans it off and I go right back over the top let's go down that pole look at that look at that pole just appear reappear again it's that easy so we don't lose anything that we've worked on. We can just get rid of it in a heartbeat. Perfect. Same thing with these tree branches. Let's just go right over there. our tree branches. Look at those branches just reappear. Every time I'm doing this, I'm just kind of wiping it off on that rag, paper towel. Wipe my building off. So this is just a matter of just kind of cleaning up what you want to clean up, getting rid of what you didn't like. Very simple to do. Okay, perfect. So now we've pretty much got all that cleaned up, at least to the point where I want it right now. And our sky is looking much brighter. I really love it. Okay. Clean off that for good. Now I've got a can down here. I'm washing my brushes. This is just a paint can. And the bottom of the can, I don't know if I'm going to be able to tilt it far enough. You can kind of see there you go. Right down in that can, we've got a screen in there. That's an old Bob Ross trick I found. So we can just clean our brushes off with that screen and that sediment, that paint is going to fall to the bottom. And that's just more odorless mineral spirits. And of course, we want to dry our brushes. Okay, so let's just continue on with what we're doing. I'm gonna get bold here. Let's find a brush, maybe a bigger brush. Okay, so this is a double thick filbert. This is that, uh, this is almost like that round blender brush. This is just a bigger one. Uh, yeah, let's take a round, let's take one of these round blender brushes too. And what I'm gonna do, I don't want to mix the paint with these big brushes, I'm gonna use a different brush. So I just don't want a lot of paint on my brushes. So I wanna to try to mix that color. I'm gonna take some black. I'm gonna take some Prussian blue. Take some white. And of course there might be A little bit of crack. We'll probably just mix it right in with that. Okay. Uh, probably going to have some more white and black in that. Now I'm going to take some of that medium. I'm going to start mixing that medium in there. Okay. I can see that's going to be too bright. We're going to take some black. 
and mix some black in there. Okay, now I'm just going to test it. Okay, so that's too bright. You see how brighter that went on? Now, this is another awesome thing about oil paints is we can test it like that and we can take our sponge with some mineral spirits and say, okay, that's too bright. And we can just wipe it right off and it's gone. So we have an unlimited amount of time to test this paint until we get it right. So I just keep adding just some more black. Let's try that. Mm, it's going to be more of like a gray. I don't like that, so I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. Uh, add some cronacridone. Maybe some more blue. It's getting close. Probably shouldn't have done that with my finger. Getting close. Probably just add some more blue. Okay, so that'll probably work. So I'm literally just going to add some color there. And then I'm going to take our brush with some, let's have a little bit of medium on the brush too. And we're just going to buff it out. We're just going to buff it out. So this is very thin. This is just going to clean things up a bit. So very thin. You notice how that small amount of paint, we're just pushing that around all over the place. You can see how that's starting to glow, really starting to glow nicely. Now we can take our bigger brush. This is going to have more push to it. It's just a stiffer brush. We're really going to push that out as we get up top here. I want that to be even more smooth. Okay, I think that'll... I think that'll work pretty good. Okay, now we've got a transition area through here. So I'm going to wash my brush and we'll pick up some white and some quinacridone. We'll grab some medium that has some blue in it. Okay, let's just try it. It's going to be too bright. More quinacridone, some more blue. Be a darker violet color. More pink. More blue. Just trying to get a close match. adding some white to that. Still don't like it. 
maybe a touch of black. Not sure what I'm doing wrong here. I'll just keep adding some more color. Darker violet. Just added some more Prussian blue. Okay, that's pretty close. Now that all those little spots we just made gone. Okay, now we can get to work. So we're going to take that color. Three, four, five, six. We've got six spots of color there. I think that'll work. Now I'm going to have to wash my brushes I was using to blend with. Take my napkin or towel, really squeeze them out, dry them off. Okay. Just buffing it out. Getting a little bit rougher now, pushing harder. Okay. It's a little bit better. Now I'm going to get this other brush, hopefully nice and dry. It's going to be stiffer. We're going to be able to push this paint around more. We're going to really start stretching that out, blending that a bit more. Keep it going. And we'll do the same down through here. Keep that moving. And it's looking better. Really keep pushing that out. All right. Okay, so we're getting close. There's some splotchiness. Now, that splotchiness, that's why I say sometimes you can't do it in one layer. And I would say that the spots that you can't do in one layer are going to be places just like this, places that are you want to be buttery smooth. That's the places that are going to be tough to do in one layer. So we may have to come back probably tomorrow. But I want to try to get this as close as I can. You can see that we're not adding a lot of paint. Um, we didn't cover a lot of this stuff, but when it goes over, you can see it just buffs kind of things, just, just little minor buffs. But the purpose to it is that it's much more luminous. It just glows that much more. So that's a good start. I think we'll have to let that transition dry and then come back to it tomorrow. Now I'll take my sponge again and I'll kind of just go over some of these branches here. Some of those branches I do want, I do like how they appear lighter, but I can go over some of them, the bigger ones, and just kind of re resaturate that by just lifting that oil paint up. Okay. So that looks pretty good for now. I don't want to keep going. I want to let that dry. That's just, just a little bit further. It's looking better. I do like it. Now that's probably the most stressful kind of oil painting when we want this to be perfectly smooth. And uh, we, didn't, we, we didn't smooth it out that much, but we did make it more luminous now tomorrow. 
I can really touch it up and just do the same thing and it's going to be perfect. But you can see that, um, that, that violet color we have here, it just pops a little bit more. Um, everything just pops more. So that's basically all I do for areas like that. Um, I don't want to continue with the sky until, uh, and I'll probably do the same thing with the moon. I'll just work a, the moon a little bit, but I just don't want to do that until I let everything dry. So we're going to leave it for right now. Um, and uh, let's get on to a couple other places in the, in the painting. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do here, is we're going to work on some of these lights and then I'll show you just a couple other things. So I'm going to just take some white and some medium, grab some medium, mix that with our white. And you'll see, now we've got a couple lights on the roof here. Watch when I apply that. Look how much brighter that is. So you can see it go on, it just really pops. And what we're going to do is basically apply that white to each one of these lights right here. And then we'll take a dry brush, somewhat dry. And I'm just, I've switched to a couple, just a couple round brushes. I got one with paint, one that's mostly dry. And we're just going to take that and we're going to start swirling it around. And we're just going to push it around. We're going to kind of pull it up. We're just buffing that around. Look how nicely that buffs out. That's perfect. So that's really enhancing our beam of light. Same thing with over here. Just kind of buff that around. Perfect. Then I can probably take, let's take a softer brush. This is just a bigger round brush. And the edges of that we can push around even more and make those edges even softer. So watch how that just kind of dissipates and our edges become very beautiful. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same brush with some color. I'm going to add some color, I should say. I'm going to grab, this is manganese blue, I guess. So we're just going to grab some blue, a little bit of medium, and then I'm going to pick up this dry brush here that I was just using. I'll pick up a little bit of that color. So we've got some blue hue to that, and we're going to buff that on around the edges. And what that's going to do, that's going to colorize that just a little bit but that color is going to make things very luminous. It's going to appear brighter when we add some color. Look at that color just go on. A little bit of blue color around the edges, especially the base. Look at that. Just enhances that light so much. And again, this is just something that we could probably touch on once this is dry and really bring it to life. 
So one layer is tough when making smooth light sources, but look at how those light sources just pop now. And we could take some of this color and kind of push it off to the edges more. Maybe we want that to glow even more so. So we'll kind of go around that. Just buffing on that color. Very minute amount, but it makes a big difference. We've got just enough to keep that moving, just enough to buff that on. The bigger the blend, softer the light, it's going to just be that much better. So we've got some really nice bluish lights now. Perfect. I like it. Now we're going to dry our, wash our brushes. And just look how that enhances those light sources. Man, they just, they look so bright. They just didn't quite have that before. And I worked a long time on that to get it that way with acrylics, and I just you just can't get it much further. Now you'll see I worked a ton on this. Now watch what happens. I'm really drying these brushes off. I want I don't want a lot of mineral spirits on that. Patting them off. Okay, let's do the same thing with those lights over here. Let's grab some white along with some medium. Okay. Now, let's just drag some white right there and drag some more white right there. So we've got two patches of light. Now, already you can see how much brighter that is. I'm just kind of thinking about what brush I want to try to use. Let's go with, this is a small double thick filbert that's really kind of worn out. I'm going to try that. Very dry. I like using dry brushes. This is super dry. Okay, and we're little circle motions. I'm just going to swirl that. And I'm going to see how far this paint will take us. I'm going to use it all and just keep it moving. Blended way. Okay, good. I'm going to take the same over here. Keep that moving. Okay, now we got just a little bit. Now look at all that is really starting to brighten up. I like it a lot. Okay, now for these lights, let's say they've got a yellow hue. We're going to pick up some cad yellow. We're going to add it to that white. I'm going to take the same brush here, just kind of a nice soft round brush, and I'm going to pick that up. right over the top, kind of that back side of that light. We're going to start buffing that on little by little. I don't want to overdo it. Same thing with this light over here. Watch how that just lifts that color up a little bit, just brightens it. It's looking pretty good. A little bit more. Okay, now let's kind of move away from that, go off towards the edges of these beams of light. Watch that, just that yellow just starts to appear very subtly.
probably shouldn't be touching it with my fingers, oil paint. Okay, now I'm gonna take some more medium, I'm gonna take some more of that yellow. Kinda go around the bottom with some of that yellow, right along the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna switch. Let's take a dry round blender here. Push hard, I want that to move. I want that to blend out. Look at that, how it just disappears. It just becomes part of the picture. Circle motions, and, and I'm going over things because I just want that appear to appear like the light is just kind of taking over things. It's, it's really, because light does, light starts to dilute things. So I'm going right over the top. It's a very thin mixture of a yellowish color. Man, look at that, just perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna wash that original brush, dry it off, I'm gonna pick up some more white paint, along with some medium. Okay, let's just turn that up a bit. Right underneath. Let's add some more white again. Okay. And then we'll go back to our dry round brush and I want to just want to fan the bottom of that out. Pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Blend it in with the rest. Pulling it down, pulling it away from our light source. Just keep pulling it down. As long as you got paint, just kind of just keep blending it. Perfect. Now look at that compared to what it was. It's just so much brighter. It's just all of a sudden, wow, we've got some lights right there. And the same thing can be done with the rest of this painting. I'm going to be doing nothing different. This is just the same thing. We just take some more white with some medium. And we want this to appear super bright. We're going to just add some of that white. Might appear subtle, but it is going to be brighter. We'll do the same thing with these windows. Just turn on the lights, brighten them up. We'll just continue to poke at things wherever we want some white, maybe on the door right there right on that leading edge of the door. We're just gonna brighten that with some more white. Man, and just like that, so that, that's it. There's nothing else to it. And another cool thing we can do, um, okay, so we've got some yellow. Let's take some yellow on our brush, add a bit of orange, and then medium to that. We've got kind of a pinkish orange, white. Okay. Now, right above our light, we're gonna add right there, and we're gonna add right there. And then I'm gonna take, we'll try it with uh, yeah, this small brush that we were using a minute ago, and I'm gonna Soften that up. Okay, now I'm gonna push it around. Now I wanna lift it upwards. Up, up, up. 
going around that light source. I don't want to touch the light source. I just want to go around it, softening any area. I'll get right against that post. Swirl that. Go up. Lift that up. That's going to brighten those areas. And what we're doing is we're creating a soft glow around that light source. And look, all of a sudden we've got some soft glow right above. It's just, it's such a subtle thing to do. But by lifting that color a bit, we're making our light source appear brighter because we're creating a glow around it. Same thing, take some of that pinkish orange color right over the boards right here. I'm going to go over the top of those boards and make that board even brighter. Again, you can't beat the luminous quality, so even if that of oil paint, so even if that color already exists on there, by buffing this over the top, we're going to make it even more dramatic. Lightening those boards on either side. And look how slowly but surely, all of a sudden, this light right here is starting to glow. That's really coming alive. And that's all I do. There's nothing else to this. There's no secrets. It's the same process. It's just you cannot beat the luminous qualities of oil. And I'll do the same thing. I'll just be tapping on some areas, maybe on these corn stalks here. Just adding some subtle highlights. And uh, so that's the stuff that oil paint just kind of has an advantage over acrylic paints. And uh, that's pretty much it. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm super excited to keep going with this painting. Uh, it's making such a big difference for me. I know you can start to see those subtle changes that are happening with the oil paint. And I hope you learned a little bit about oil paint over acrylics and maybe how to apply that in your painting process as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please be sure to leave any questions you have in the comments below. I will join the discussion. I'll also throw up a, a before and after picture here just to kind of show you the difference that that's actually making for me. Um, again, I'm just so excited to keep going with this. I will share this painting as a whole in a time lapse video in the next few days um, at some point here. So again, Thank you for watching. Please be sure to check out my free print giveaway as well as my eBay auctions and website. Both of those links are in the description below. We'll see you next time on another episode of Paint Like a Pro.